Happy Halloween, friends. It's my favorite holiday by a long shot, and it's not just because of candy and dress up. It's all about the horror. Uh, ghosts, goblins, supernatural scares. And if you're like me, jump scares and gore don't really do it. Uh, for me, I love the horror in the psychological and the supernatural, uh, even in my horror comics. So today I want to talk about one of my favorite horror series that scratches that very specific itch and maybe a little gore in the mix as well. I'm talking about Michael Walsh's The Silver Coin, a horror anthology series uh, that I hope to see return very soon. But you don't have to take my word for it. I'm Dan Umphan, and this is Bleeding Rainbow, er, the Doomcast. Okay, first do me a favor, hit subscribe and the bell. I do about one of these videos a week. They're all great, I promise, so please don't miss even one. Uh, the Silver Coin is a horror anthology series from artist Michael Walsh, collaborating with multiple writers centering on the eponymous Silver Coin. Each issue, which is generally written by a different writer, finds the coin making its way into the hands of some poor soul uh, in a way that usually eventually undoes them. When I say undoes them, I mean generally they die horrifically. Uh, the coin is imbued with a supernatural power to grant the deepest desires of its bearer, uh, but that fulfillment comes at a price. The bearer of the coin generally gains unnatural skill at whatever it is that they want to do or some kind of boom. Uh, like in the first issue by Chip Zdarsky, in which Ryan, a guitarist in 1979, is losing gigs with his band to disco, picks up a random coin during practice and uses it as a guitar pick. And suddenly his skill is immediately amplified. Heh. <laughs> Heh. Amplified. Uh, but it also sees him struggle with self-obsession and eventually alienating his friends and bandmates before burning a gig down with him and his new fans inside. The stories are also somewhat loosely related, although not explicitly. Uh, they're set in the same universe and they acknowledge that. Like in the second issue, Kelly Thompson uh, writes a story about a girl named Pickle who uses the coin to devour mean girls at summer camp, but uh, the events are later referenced uh, in another issue by Josh Williamson, in which a bullied mall rat kid in an arcade becomes insanely good at a Killer Instinct style video game called Horror Fighter 2, he overhears some kids in the mall talking about what happened at that summer camp. Walsh's own penned issues expand on the history and the origin of the coin in colonial New England, why it holds the power that it does, and why it has a goat's eye. <laughs> the coin itself seeks out its own victims and has something of a mind of its own, an agenda, and before the series went on hiatus, it became clear that it might see some people as allies, willingly or unwillingly. One of my favorite individual stories is Pornsack Fisher Shodes' issue in which a couple struggling through the pandemic, which in fact, this is one of the very few pieces of fiction in media that actually acknowledges that the pandemic happened. We don't like to talk about it. Uh, this couple gradually grows apart uh, until they, their lives sort of take a horrific turn uh, due to the corn's horrible power. Don't really want to ruin anything, but it's crazy. I feel like I can't go into real great detail about these stories because each of them has one of those turns where you can kind of predict what's going to happen, but they happen in such a unique and clever way, you really didn't predict shit. Uh, it really manages to wow me every single issue because, it, it, which is to say nothing for the art also, which is fantastic. Uh, rarely do you see anthology series that are drawn entirely by one artist. Uh, usually it's the other way around, where it's one writer collaborating with multiple artists, but this is, this is very exciting uh, because the consistency is refreshing. It brings all of the stories together and it does really make them feel like they're all set in the same shared universe. Uh, Walsh's use of inky watercolor and uh, kind of muted colors uh, and, and monochrome gives this whole series a very auteur feel to it. Uh, like the very best of you know, Twilight Zone or Outer Limits or Tales from the Crypt. Every turn in every story has some of the freshest writing from the top talent in the comics industry right now, like Stephanie Phillips, uh, Matthew Rosenberg, Ed Brisson, uh, horror favorite James Tynan IV. Um, the whole series is so fantastic. I can't really recommend this strongly enough for a horror go-to comic and it should be in your poll when it returns. 
It is on hiatus right now while uh, Michael Walsh takes care of his new baby, which congratulations uh, if you haven't watched this. Uh, I expect it to come back, but in the interim, if you've never read any of this series, you should absolutely pick up one of the three trades from Image Comics that you can find at your LCS or online, uh, wherever you happen to go for your comics, but definitely it is worth picking up. It is a horror best bet. Trust me on that. Thanks everybody for watching. Hope to see you again next week. And again, happy Halloween. Thanks. Take it easy. Peace.